Hey, this is Brian from The Sleeping Elephant. I'm going to review Shadow Men, an encyclopedia of mind control by Anthony Napoleon. This is a must-read book recommended by Mike Cernovich. Surprisingly, it cost me $20 to purchase. Although that is not the normal price I pay for books, I typically pay $3 or so. It is one of those rare books that is, if you're clueless or you just watch too much mainstream media, because if you watch too much mainstream media, this book will blow you away. Hence, just pick it up. It's a very red pill type of book. What are shadow men? Just think of them as vampires in the dark. An organism of evil. It reminds me of the Illuminati or someone behind the scenes puppeting the masses, as well as what's behind the curtain, as you see in The Wizard of Oz. There are the narcissists in plain sight. Then there are the ones behind living in darkness that won't take responsibility for anything, but gain off the mind control of the population. Complete manipulated mind control. They have that sick fantasy of power and control over men. Not in the underworld, but vampires would be the perfect metaphor. He puts things as highly sophisticated psychological operations, short for psyops. It's really hard to see if you're being manipulated or not, and he puts this as attribution theory, which you can research on your own. There are red lights to stop you, mob enforcing conformity, symbolic displays. There is, of course, the mention of the Matrix, that's why this book is so red pill. What's reality and what's virtual reality? Is a city kid masculine? And the shadow men are taking advantage of the PTSD or the Pavlonian responses of human nature. What ticks the feminists off? What ticks men off? How can we destroy men and keep them as an obedient mule? Modern day talk, you'll hear mostly of globalist. However, that is just a projection of shallow thinking. It's not just globalists. They are the shadow men. Are people suffering from a collective delusion? Just to understand things as, say, a buffalo herd, where they mindlessly go wherever the herd is going. There is SJWs, the college bubble. People can be bought out. They are agents, just like in the Red Pill Matrix. There's Agent Smith. You have the shadow men, and then you have agents who would diligently do things for profit, gain, or status. Agents, they could be a Hollywood agent acting like a fool, like a clown on TV. Who is the fallout guy? Government can be bought out, that's very easy to see, as well as corporations. They can go global. They can outsource. They can cut whoever they want. They could promise jobs this and that. But in actuality, they can do what they want. The Shadow Men is a secret society, so they don't really show their faces. They get off the control. They're vampires or suffer from megalomania can be power hungry, perverse, wanting a sick world where the beauty is not shining through. They could be pedophiles. They keep your knowledge secret. They live in secret society. As well as you can see in the banking industry, there's a chapter on banks where they make money from money. Let's just finance everything with other people's money. They recommend material indulgence, such as you can see in the college bubble. You can see in these big houses that have mortgage loans that really inflate the prices. Yet you get your little tax credit out in the United States. You could write it off, but you have to pay into this system. And what's the shadow men profit off of? There's the Federal Reserve, the LIBOR. There's Ponzi schemes, and it's not a place where much virtue is being exhibited. And I was very surprised reading this book that he did not get too progressive or too liberal in this book. Anthony Napoleon's other book, The Progressive Vice, which I have not read, just seems as though with a name like that, Progressive Virus, you would see him get really yanking at the liberal left, or right now they call it intolerant left. But it's very written very good. It's very neutral. There was a few writing mistakes that I saw. However, still a real good book. There's a cool elephant shackle story, which I've heard many times, but pay attention to the metaphor of the elephant in shackles. As well as you look at my name, The Sleeping Elephant. Cycles are controlled and produced. He puts it as the fear salvation control cycle, where it keeps on happening in that particular way, as well as to understand as many of my other videos that I talk about the Hegelian dialect, that the solution is presented ahead of time and everything will become about the solution. Somehow these, they're always find themselves being a savior or the con man will present the solution while the shadow man pulls strings. How men are weakened with this collectivist and entitlement complex. Any type of socialism and communism reveals. There are a ton of examples that Anthony Napoleon dissects. And pay attention to every single one of these just to spark a little bit of thinking or another perspective. For instance, he talks about the founding fathers of America, how they had to create a firewall from the evil of the British Empire. 
and whoever else was trying to come in and how they had to make sacrifices. It wasn't really the British. It was the shadow men telling them what to do. For instance, here's a good quote. The English were not the only ones who had their eye on the new world. All of Europe's shadow men had the same general idea, exploit the new world for their benefit. Native American shadow men had exactly the same idea. So you see a world that, especially in these past 500, 600 years, whatever, Europe gets the blame. And there was a lot of poisonous shit going on, a lot of corruption, but it wasn't really these people. It was the shadow men. This type of evil on your shoulder, kind of how like have you have the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. It's the corrupt, disgusting, evil, soulless side of the shadow men. In terms of the United States, of course, with its history, I had read the people history of the United States way back in say 1997 or 96. And the whole reason that I read that book was because of Good Will Hunting where he had outsmarted whatever um, Robin Williams. And I wanted to read what this book was about. So I picked it up. It was 500, 600 pages, but it does blow you away. And I somewhat believe much of what was said in that book, but it is a different angle than this glorious type of image that we have in school of how United States was founded or who Christopher Columbus was. What is what what happened? And you learn all this by reading. There's also Edward Bernays propaganda book that you can read. And all this is about manipulation and almost taking advantage of the dumbed down masses. He has an excellent chapter on Marxism and feminism, as well as propaganda, how it takes a while to understand this is you have to relax and take a step back that people's minds are being constructed and led on to fight each other. So you have sides attacking each other and conflicting with each other and having tension while the shadow men are just cheering this shit on and, and enjoying this type of pain and benefiting from this. I mean, look how radical and how stupid feminism has become. And there are a ton of quotes in here for any feminist, red pill, MGTOW, whatever, to understand. Here's a few of them. Not only did women not resent being exploited, they welcomed it. It was my right to smoke just like a man. No one is going to tell me what to do. If a man can do it, so can I. Here's another quote. The social revolution termed feminism was funded, promoted, and imposed upon America and Western Europe by agents of shadow men who plotted the demise of the traditional nuclear family unit in order to increase their wealth and control over the masses. Homes were no longer affordable without long and indentured mortgages. No longer would children have a mother or father to spend significant time with them. No, of course not. Another one, the so-called women's movement was not about women in the least. Feminism was about more money and control for shadow men. I mean, look how stupid and people have been duped. The man Angina has no fucking clue what's going on. And the human species loses from this. Here's the quote. Feminism was the end result of an invisible hand socially engineering women's attitudes in service to dissolving the wealth generating power and autonomy of the average man and woman and transferring that wealth and control into the hands of shadow men and their agents. That was kind of a screwed up sentence, but it kind of makes sense. The courts profit, the agents such as lawyers, the government profits, politicians profits off of women that who are become dependable on the government after the age of 30, when they are no longer able to attract a man to take care of them. I mean, it's become a disaster, really. And for me, this was a very good, and for me, this book did not teach me as much because I already know much of this, but it does put things in a template to better understand and another way of understanding what goes on in the darkness. And I mean the darkness as in more of the evil part, not so much the truth hiding or new ways of thinking or being or outside your own consciousness and finding the real you. This is more of the evil side of life. But the biggest thing that I picked up from this book is the high self-esteem movement. And this is something that's happening with especially the millennial generation and the new generation where they're being pumped up with information that it can create a false sense of intelligence. And I do think this is becoming a dumbed down zombie for people. They're not getting smarter. They're becoming dumber. How much can you learn from Instagram? Even the internet, he calls it the Google IQ. So of course, this is the new world where we have information at our fingertips with Google and they can control anything that when we type things in, what is on the first or second or third line or what is most popular searched, which is the influence of social proof. And of course, a social proof can be a lie. And if you understand things through information plantations, as Nicholas Carr puts it, he's the writer for The Shallows, where people kind of go toward the shortcut way. The Wikipedia has become a information plantation where that is not the truth. 
But if it's there, you might believe it as well as people don't want to do the work. It's a come hither type of thing that is happening with the male, especially. And for females, Instagram is super inflating females' egos where it's going to be a crash landing, you know, when that beauty as well as fertility starts to come down. Here's a few quotes. The artificially high self-esteem movement has undermined man's ability to know something more than factual information. He or she can easily copy, cut, and paste. And this is a big ego boost where, you know, I would always try to learn from people that are older from you. That's just the wisdom, not the fucking internet. Here's a quote. That is the easy access to information has promoted the belief among the masses that they are smarter and no more than those who grew up without access to the internet. This section would be really good for females, for my female listeners. Here it is. When girls and women are brainwashed to reject traditional values, the vacuum created is filled with hedonism, self-absorption, and behavior that looks eerily similar to anti-commitment males, including sexual promiscuity and all that goes along with it. Very vague, but you can see what the writer's saying. Next quote. They promoted the rejection of committed marriage in favor of self-centered lifestyle, idealizing single women as beautiful warrior princesses and or sexual libertines who live Live in a world of rainbows, white wine, and perpetual happiness. Take the red pill. And you may not see it, or you can see it in front of you, is hedonistic, narcissistic, maniacal, ravenous, and sexually perverted monsters have assumed control. This is the shadowman. That was a quote. Be sure to look at the media around you, the cable hosts, the news anchors who occupy every single part of the network or cable program. Are they real? Watching that movie Hunger Games, we see the speaker, the host, with his fake ass teeth and fake ass vibe that why pay attention to them and at the end of this book he gives advice for his readers another good section that i take to heart because it had some really good soft solutions and even therapy so you don't feel alone here's a couple everyone i know has been brainwashed like me therefore i shall be patient and reach out to other victims who have yet to awaken from their stupor you have to have a little bit of patience When they have that revelation, they will have that revelation. You can tell a story. You could recommend things. Ultimately, it is that person who must do it. So you have to live your life and hang around common people who have read this book. The last one I will recommend, and this is probably my favorite one because it has to do with what I do. Of course, I do book reviews and I read a ton of books and I stay away from a lot of the junk that you see on TV as well as some most of the social media. So here it is. I shall spend more time reading than watching, more time doing and less time worrying. As I cleanse myself of the brainwashing I have been subjected to, I now realize passively watching and listening to the media at the expense of reading is harmful to my health and well-being. So hopefully this wasn't too boring and you stayed till the end and you heard that comment right at the end. More reading is better. A lot of this shit wouldn't have happened if males would read and not go for that shortcut lifestyle. Thanks for listening. Keep reading and stay super chillin'.